St Saviour's. Good evening. My name's Diane Minton and I'm absolutely chuffed to bits to be kicking off uh, our new summer series that's going out at eight o'clock on Sunday evening. So I'm just going to share a passage that I was reading a few weeks ago um, and then I will give you, you know, my thoughts around that. So I'm kicking off with Luke 10, 38 to 42. And yes, it's at the home of Martha and Mary. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a, a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. And she came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. Right, now I've read this passage many times and a few weeks ago I was reading this and something just jumped out of the page at me and bit me on the nose. And that was Mary's decision to sit at Jesus' feet. And the reason that jumped out at me was because that was an extraordinary decision for her to make. Now I need to explain and, and to do that we need to go back. So let's go back, maybe we're present there at that supper. So we see Mary at Jesus' feet. Now the reason that was a big decision for her was because of how she had been raised. Both Martha and Mary had, were of the same parentage, they were four sisters, Martha was older than Mary. They would have been raised in exactly the same way. And when a girl child was born, they really had, they were really raised for one really clear um, purpose, and that was to serve. As she was growing up, her mother and her older sisters would undertake the training, would teach her to cook, would teach her how to do the laundry, would teach her how to weave the fabric to make clothing, would teach her how to manage a household, budget, budget the accounts, and be great hosts, as was deemed really important at the time. Hospitality was everything. And so, in order for Mary to turn her back on that, I don't believe it was an easy decision. I do believe that she would have had a big dilemma. She wanted and needed and should have been working with her sister, no question. But she was so desperate to hear the word of the Lord. She was so thirsty for his word. Because what we do know at that stage was that both Martha and Mary, they were growing in faith and they both would have wanted to hear Jesus speak. But Mary was the one who made the decision to turn her back on her sister, turn her back on her upbringing, turn her back on her duty. But I believe that there was something between Jesus and Mary. I do believe that there was some non-verbal communication from Jesus to Mary to say, you're making the right decision, Mary. Come sit by me. And I think to underline that, to endorse that, I can quite imagine that he just gently rested his hand on her head to say, yes, my dear, this is exactly where you need to be. I will deal with Martha. And then, of course, we've got Martha in the kitchen. Now she's going to be muttering to herself banging about with the pots and pans. How dare Mary leave me to do all this on my own? How 
Mary, Mary, leave me in the lurch. She should be walking with me. That's her duty. I want to be listening to Jesus too. And she works herself up into a tizzy. And you can imagine her come striding up to Jesus and saying, please, Lord, I need Mary's help. Tell her to come and help me. Now, Martha would have expected that Jesus' response would have been, oh, go on, Mary, yes, you're right. Martha's got a lot to do, Mary. Go and help her and then come back and sit with me. But no, he didn't do that. He berated Martha very gently. And what he was saying to her, bottom line, is that you've got your priorities wrong. Your sister hasn't. And that must have hurt Martha. Because she would have expected the opposite response. She would have expected some support from Jesus. Because we do know that Jesus is a man of the times. He was born and raised traditionally in a very similar household, in a very similar way. He would certainly have seen his mother serving her husband, his brothers. He would definitely have seen his extended family, the women folk in his family, serving their men folk. It was the way it was. And so Jesus certainly would have known that Mary's duty was to be with Martha. But of course we do know that at that time, Jesus was very, very aware that time was not on his side. Jesus had a mission to fulfill and he needed to get the word out to as many people as possible, in as many ways as possible, before he left. And that's really why he upheld Mary's decision. So the message through this is very clear. It's about priorities. It's about prioritizing the Lord. Now, every one of us, gender aside, has a Martha and a Mary in us. It's the Martha in us who's the practical one. She's the housekeeper. She's the one that organises her time. And the Mary in us is the one that, that's thirsty for knowledge. The Mary in us is the one that is reaching up and trying to, you know, raise up our communication with the Lord and build our relationship with him. Because we do know, and, the, and Jesus certainly knew, that when our minds are so overwhelmed with the practical stuff, when we're all trying to juggle and keep as many balls in the air as possible, it's not possible for us to hear his, his word. The only way that we can hear what the Lord wants to say to us is for us to carve out time just to sit and be with him. He wants us to practice that good, that good habit while we, while we still have that time to do so. So that when the lockdown finally ends, the good practice that we've set aside for ourselves in sitting and quietly being and waiting for his word, that will carry on, even though at some point we will get back onto the treadmill of life. And so the, the message clear Spend more time with the Lord while we can. When Martha's ascendancy comes into play, make sure we balance that with Mary time. Let's continue to carve out spe specific time 
where we sit quietly and open our hearts, our minds, my eyes, our ears to the word of the Lord. And so I'm going to finish now and I'm going to still uh, Boris's slogan of today. Be alert, stay safe. But I'm saying to you, be alert for the voice of the Lord and stay safe so that we can be together in the not too distant future again. Thank you for listening.